Can you hear me now? I forgot to unmute myself. Hi, everyone. Hello, Frank and Clown, boy Robert and David. Can you hear me now okay? Oh, great. Okay. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> um, and there's no, like, strange echo or anything like that? Let me know in the comments. There is, there is an echo? Darn. All right. What shall I do? No echo for you? Huh. I wonder what that is about then. Let me see. Hi, Ash. How's it going? Let me try something like... Is there echo? Yes, there's echo now. Darn. What can I do? Uh, all right. It sounds okay to you? Maybe I only hear an echo when I have it. I'm like trying to figure out if it makes sense to have it go through my phone, the sound go through my phone or the sound go through um, the computer. So, so, so right now I already have my phone connected to the current dissection scope that I had to try to make things a little smoother until I get the new uh, dissection scope set up. It's better? Okay. I hope it's better for everybody. You don't hear an echo either. Right? Oh, okay. Okay, great. Then I'll continue this way. All right. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome to the broadcast today. And today we're going to be talking about uh, nature lollipops. Yay! <laughs> um, I just can't help but think of these as like they look like little lollipops on a stick. And uh, we're going to dive into why, why, <laughs> in a moment. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, Ash, for the lollipop emojis. And hello, Evan. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm also curious if this is going to Periscope, because I know Periscope was supposed to end yesterday. I still have the option to choose Periscope. So um, anyway, so yeah, here is what we're going to take a look at today. We're going to dissect a couple and see what we find inside. So these are the homes th that were built, or the lollipops, you could say, inverted lollipop maybe? Inverted lollipop, let's call it that, made by a little fly called the goldenrod gall fly. Or a scientific name is Eurosta solidagnus, and solidagnus is a hat tip to the plant species solid, uh, solidago. Canadensis, which is the scientific name for the host plant, which uh, now, of course, it's this part and this stalk is dead from winter. But inside of here, uh, we can expect to find a little life, a little fly larva that has spent the winter all, well, frozen, but protected by chemicals by natural antifreeze. And what happens is with the life cycle of this fly, hello two scoops, how's it going? Wow, it's totally still going to the Periscope app. <laughs> Interesting. But can anybody even watch on Periscope? Because when I go on Periscope, like I can see that it's still functioning, but like a, a screen pops up to kind of block it kind of block the usage. I can't exit the screen that pops up. So I don't know if it's, yeah, interesting, interesting. Okay. Yes, yes, so then you have the screen that pops up or yes, so then you can click into the broadcast through Periscope out of curiosity. You're on Periscope, that guy? Interesting. We are pushing the limits of Periscope. That's true, two scoops. You can bypass the screen, but at this point, why would you want to? I suppose to reach people who haven't made the move yet, but um, it's time. It's only going downhill, Periscope, because today, yesterday was the day they said they'd shut it down. So, wait, the pop-up screen is gone again? Interesting. All right, well, oh, David says I have to hack it. First, go in without any Wi-Fi data and then turn it on. Oh, cool. Gotta use it while I still can. 
I see you, you said that last comment from Periscope. Nice. Yes. Hold on, Periscope. <laughs> uh, perhaps if you didn't update the app. Yeah, the tricky thing for me is that I was using a thing called Betascope for a while, which was an app that Periscope had for testing out features before they released it on the Periscope app, and then that expired before Periscope expired. So I had to download the latest version of Periscope, unfortunately. Um, two Skip says, I guess they're leaving it up to allow people to access all the content. Yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I'm still able, even on the desktop version, to go in and edit my profile description, which is very helpful. You can still get parts on Periscope? Cool. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Good old heart button. Actually, heart. Heart. Curly heart. Now vintage sticker, which I'm saving this one. I'm saving this to put on... Um, the new dissection scope that I get once I get it. It's going on there. I have this one and I still have uh, one last super heart. Yay! All right. Now on Twitter Live. Oh, I still have to explore Twitter Live. I don't fully understand it. So, all right, let's get back to the program here though. And thanks for the award, David. So much. Thanks so much. And everyone who's given an award so far, I don't think I acknowledge them all. Clown boy, thank you. I'm David, hello. David Howden, hello. Okay, so what I'm holding here are so probably what are three little baby flies that made their own inverted lollipop. And I say inverted lollipop because the good stuff that you eat is was on the inside of the lollipop, not on the outside. So you can think of the outside of the lollipop, the plant structure, and the plant's uh, skin as being the stick that would be on the lollipop that like we're used to eating. So it's like a inverted lollipop, I'd say. So it happens in their, in their life cycle. Uh, I don't have a picture of an adult yet, but I probably will soon once these ones hatch. So stay tuned. The adult uh, looks, it will, it's the family Tephridity, which is one of the fruit fly families. And uh, the mom will lay a single egg um, uh, into the stalks of the um, Solidago goldenrod plants. These, these goldenrod plants are the ones that you see in the fall all across North America. I'm not sure what the status is of Europe, if you guys have goldenrod plants too, but um, what happens is the female lays an egg. She might lay a couple eggs in a stalk, but usually only one gall ends up forming per stalk of Solidago. And actually, I can show you guys this is, this is, I have this screen set up here for when we, um, for when we zoom in and take a look through the camera in a moment. Okay, so, because the little larva inside is very small, so I want to use the dissection scope for that. So, um, the, yeah, so the little larva, they burrow, they get cozy in there and they release chemicals that cause the plant to start growing the tissue in an abnormal, strange way. So normally the stalk would just be this skinny all the way to the top, but with the powers harnessed, or the powers of the chemicals that are generated by this tiny little fly baby, the tissues of the plant swell up into what we could call a little nursery, or what I will call the inverted nature lollipop. And there are tasty plant tissues on the inside of this structure that the little maggot, the little baby fly will eat. And that's what it survives on. And it molts a couple of times in the summer. And then in the fall, what's really interesting to me, hi Rev, how's it going? Hey Pablo, good to see you guys. Um, what's really interesting is how they overwinter as little larvae, little tiny larvae, they don't pupate yet. But, but in anticipation for pupation and for eventually having to emerge and exit this, because it's a pretty hard structure now, it's rather sturdy. So what they do is while the plant's still green and while there's still little larvae that are happily eating away at the plant tissue on the inside, they're inverted the lollipop, they will burrow to the edge of the gall, the very edge of the tissue and leave a very thin layer so that when they 
finally molt and become an adult fly, they just have a very thin layer to get back past. Um, and so somewhere on this uh, lollipop, inverted lollipop, there is a very thin little layer and a tunnel that goes to the center, which is the escape route for the adult fly once it's ready to emerge. It's ready to emerge when um, they're probably, they might be in pupation now, we'll find out in a moment, but they'll be ready to emerge when the solidago, the goldenrod, stalks, the plant starts to grow up again because it's not worth it for them to emerge before that. Because once they emerge, they are alive for about two weeks where the males and females find each other, mate, and the female finds a plant to lay the next round of eggs on. Well, that's galling, says Blinky. Good. <laughs> Hi, Nico. Good to see you here on Hat. Um, okay. Oh, David says congrats on getting number six on the March referral challenge. Thank you. Yeah, it was quite the challenge. Uh, and then David says, we do have so, uh, goldenrod. I think one is native, but we also have one that's been brought in from the new world. Yeah. Um, cool. Hi, Deanna. Good to see you. Okay. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and dissect one and take a look inside. So... A couple I'll use for dissection here, and then I'll save a couple and put them in a container so we can see what emerges from them, sort of an emergence chamber so we can see. Because while I'm pretty sure that what's going to emerge are little uh, solidago flies, little goldenrod gall flies, they do get parasitized by wasps sometimes, and so there could be a surprise we could have a couple, another species in here that um, have pirated the lollipop. So, um, also, uh, there are wasps that like to eat these and attack them, and they prefer the galls that are smaller, and there are woodpeckers that like to come and eat them too, and they, the woodpeckers prefer the galls that are larger. So, depending on the habitat and whether there's more woodpeckers or more wasps around, you might find larger or smaller inverted nature lollipops in the wild, um, kind of channeled by what is getting eaten, what's not getting eaten. So, yeah, so here we go. Let's dig in. Um, Rush Franklin says, Russian nesting doll galls. <laughs> yeah, there could be a little wasp in there that ate the little fly, and we don't know why. No, we do know why. It's because they're tasty for them. So, all right, let's do it. Um, I don't have like professional dissection equipment here at home. So I'm going to use this tiny little paring knife and hopefully it'll be sharp enough. If it isn't, I'll run over and grab a serrated knife to help us um, cut open, delicately cut open the gall. Uh, also, I'm not totally sure. It's, it's a little tricky <laughs> because I feel like cutting it with my computer screen on is like too far away but then this this screen up here seems a little very, like very much zoomed in but it might be best to use this one so hey duke uh plutonium thank you you say your skills are the best thank you uh the the plant's name is solidago or um it's called solidago canadensis is what i believe this plant is specifically and there are different gall flies that you might find on different species yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't have safety glasses. Don't try this at home, folks. But I actually do with adult supervision if you're not an adult. <laughs> All right. So let me flip these two. And we'll just do the little more, the kind of more zoomed in version, maybe. Yeah, I guess. Can I turn this camera? Can I turn this down? Let me see if I can bring this down so you guys can see. Oh, maybe we can do that. Double view here. Okay. Oh, that's too far up. One moment. Okay, maybe we can try that. See how that looks. Okay. And let me adjust the camera up here. Okay, let's try that. Cool. So, let me cut this open. 
This is this is breaking and entering, so I'm very sorry, little skull fly. But we are excited to meet you. Um, I wonder if it's better to break it this way too. All right, maybe I'll go from top bottom. I don't know. I haven't done this before. I've actually opened them when they were. Oh, sorry. I knocked the camera around. Oh, no. Not that I knocked the camera around. Maybe it's better if I just show this this version first. Since I'm doing a lot of movement. Yeah, let's do that. And then we will go to the camera up here. Because I moved everything around. Oops. Okay. All right, let's do that. Okay. So one of the easiest ways to open this might be like stepping on it or applying an immense amount of pressure like that. All right, I broke it into a ball. We'll see what happens. Um, oh, David says that's the one we have here as a non-native. Uh, I see. You have our native, our most common prolific native. That's very... Um, Abundant and disturbed habitat, sort of like milkweed. So I'm going to try to cut it a bit and then pry it apart, pry it open. Um, hi, the blue printer. Welcome to the broadcast. Make sure you subscribe if you like to explore entomology or are curious to do so. Okay. So I'm going to try to just make a sort of circle around the edges and then pry it open. That's my plan. All right. So it's very tough. Nice defense here. Nice defense. Oops. Are you ever playing ukulele on the stream again? <laughs> Yes, I do. I am interested in playing ukulele on the stream again. Good question. I just haven't, I've been really busy with uh, moving my live stream over to HAPS. This is where it's being pushed from HAPS to you. This is really tough. Good nail color, you said. Thanks. It's definitely not easy to have a nail color on because it's already so chipped. I, I chip it so easily. But thank you. I'll definitely be playing ukulele once the cicadas come out because I wrote a song. Well, wrote the lyrics um, to Angels We Have Heard on High, but a cicada version. Cicadas we have heard on high. Sweetly singing on the train. And the females in reply. I forget the lyrics right now, but oh, this is really tough. I'm trying to cut around it so I don't hurt our the resident. See, this is why it's important for them to make an exit hole before uh, the spring comes around and they pupate. I need a trained woodpecker to open it. Says David How did <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, um, and so while I'm opening it too. You're in Idaho. Cool. You have a love-hate relationship with milkweed. Totally. Yeah, it pops up everywhere. Um, you let it grow around your house and kill it from your crops when you're farming. Yeah, the thing is, milkweed, like, it's not... I was talking to one of the botanists at the Academy of Natural Sciences where I work, and she was saying it's not really a weed um, and, like, the forest or anything like that, but it's so good with disturbed spaces, and we as humans make a lot of disturbed spaces, and so it thrives in those open, disturbed patches of land, oh, like gardens, for example, and probably agricultural spaces, too. I definitely do need a trained woodpecker. Wow, this is so tough. So yeah, it's a good thing that they make their tunnel before the spring, otherwise they'd never make it out of here. They'd be entombed. So one thing that they do use as adults to bust out of this, because there's that thin layer that's still left, 
There's something called a telidum. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> and here, let me, uh, I'm putting it on the screen so you guys can see. Uh, telidum, I think it's called. I think that's how to pronounce it. I'm not really sure. Okay. Hi, Claire. How are you? Thanks for coming on over. Right now we're opening a, what I'm calling an inverted nature lollipop, which is not for humans, but created by these flies. And so we're trying to open one to look inside and say hello and see what's going on. I definitely thought I'd open more than one on this broadcast, but with this pace, I'm probably just going to end up opening one on the broadcast. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe after this one, I'll be an experienced veteran at opening these and so maybe the next will be faster but it's definitely easier when they are alive very all right i almost feel like just stepping on it so i can crush it but i'm not sure um how are you still here I don't know how I'm still here. How are you still here? Are you on are you on Periscope or are you saying hi through Twitter, Die Heart Designs? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Hey Duke. Yeah, that's interesting. You're saying hello from Periscope. Oh my gosh. We are hanging on. Till the till they I don't know what's gonna happen next, but they said today was the last day. But make sure you guys do follow up, come on over to HAPS or find me on Twitch or YouTube if you want to continue once they do find a way to completely block us out. Haha, <gasps> -ha! did you guys hear that? Oh, let me get it closer to you guys. It's not fair for me to open it here. <laughs> um, the moment of discovery. Sorry. <laughs> so in this little chamber in the center is our little fly baby friend. I'll put him underneath the scope so we can take a closer look. I think it's a pupa actually. I think it's in its pupa form, which seems season appropriate. Although it did just rain here. I mean, snow this morning. Uh, it is like the spring flowers have blossomed. I'm up in Michigan. Okay. Turning on the other camera again, once I get it in focus. Um, interesting, my, my, oh, okay, there it is, awesome. All right, there's our little baby fly nestled in its um, protective little home that it made for itself using chemicals and manipulating the plant tissues. So this, yeah, it's really cold today. It's freezing here, literally. Don't, they don't look familiar. I wonder if we ha have them here in oh, Idaho. You probably do have these in Idaho. If you want to check, an easy way to check plutonium or Hey Duke, is if you look on iNaturalist and type in the Eurosta philodagnus, which is the species. Um, so let's zoom in for an even closer look because why not? Yeah, so you can see it has a little chamber even within the chambers, and I think it's pupating, but it's, I don't. I don't know. We could try to take it out even more. I'll, I could give it up. I can give it a little poke and see. Actually, I'm not sure if I have the right tool for that. Actually, here we go. How it responds. Hello. Yeah, so I think it's I think it's pupating right now, I guess. So um, I will put this in a container and we can check on it. And when it emerges, 
I can give updates every week on how our little friend is doing. Sorry, let me get this back in focus. There we go. Um, I can give updates on how our little friend here is doing and we can follow it and then I can show you what it looks like once it's alive. Okay, I'll, oh, um, I was, I was going to spell it in the chat, but then, oh, I know how to do it, send it to you. I can put it as a notifer and type it in that way. So, one sec. Euro solid diagonal. Which is the golden rod. Gold fly. Okay. Ready? Coming up on the screen for you. The spelling. Hello, John. Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks for subscribing. Hi, Yvonne. We'll have to catch the rest of the replay. Um, to catch you up, we... Um, so I collected some of these out in the field. Actually, if you want to see what they looked like in the field, you can check my Instagram story. I have a picture of them out in the field. And uh, it was literally these ones that I took that were in the photo. And uh, I brought them back, and I'm calling them a nature... Uh, nature's lollipop, a homemade nature lollipop, because this little species of fly, um, like, uh, like lives from birth to, or from egg to adult even, all of its life cycle is within the goldenrod, except for the two weeks out of the whole entire year, when the adult flies around looking for a mate and looking for a suitable new spot to uh, lay an egg and have the cycle continue. So, um, hi guys, thanks for popping in. What kind of microscope? This is a binocular stereoscope. I'm not sure what a bright field is, but this is the one that I always use. The one that I, yeah, exactly, hey Duke. Hey Duke and Blinky both say, wake up, wakey wakey, wake up pupa, you're famous. Yeah. He's incubating now or um, making sure it's ready to face the camera getting its beauty rests and soon it'll have oh another cool thing too is that they don't like what happens when an insect comes out of pupation or it's chrysalis for example is they emerge and then they inflate their wings so because this one emerges as a as an adult fly right here inside of here, I'll hold up the other side for people who missed this part. Inside of um, this sort of chamber, if it had its wings, it'd be if it had its wings inflated in there, that would be bad because they might get torn on the way out. So it doesn't inflate the wings until it leaves the chamber, um, and once it's outside, it inflates those wings and they dry off, and then it flies off into the world to find uh, its mate. Yeah. You're welcome, hey Duke. Yeah, thanks for spelling it in the chat, Blinky, though. Not very socialized. Yeah, they spend most of their time in isolation. And then as adults, they're a little more social. But yeah, it's, it's a very solitary life. Um, David Howden says of Ron Haps, makes me want to go and check a goldenrod patch tomorrow. Please do. We don't have that species of fly here, but uh, Campiglossa grandinata does gall in Solidago here. It's rare, though. Oh, interesting. Yeah, these are super common. Pretty much, like, they're so common to come across. And the patch that I found them in, it's the patch that I was broadcasting from on Periscope a couple... It's the park where I was broadcasting from Periscope a couple days ago over at West Park. Um, I almost did another broadcast on finding the gall, these galls. And then I was like, oh, I've already done three broadcasts today. So I'll save it for Thursday. Um, there are so many, so many, so many, so many. So, uh, <laughs> Deanna says, most of their time in isolation, same these days. Yep. Uh, Yvonne says, I haven't seen them in a long time, not since invertebrate bio class. Uh huh. Wait, when you say them, do you mean like the scopes sort of things or little tiny flies or fruit flies, things like that? 
Um, the latter uses transmitted light, while the former is a low resolution. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm not familiar with all of those different types. Okay, so another thing that I also found, which is going to be a future topic of the bug scope, and I know it's a very popular topic, is that among all the galls, well, first of all, apparently having twins on a stalk is rare, and so I found twins, which is exciting. So here are some twins. You can see there's two on here, which is not a common occurrence. Thanks for the super heart, David. Um, I did find this. Do you guys know what this is? I'll make it bigger. I'll make I'll make us equals the um, little maggot and I. I'll make us equals on the screen. Okay. Do you guys know what this is here? Ah, the flies. We used to do field work a lot. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm glad you guys did a lot of field work because it's good to get out in the field and uh, engage, engage with the environment and hands-on things. Those are the most memorable experiences I've had in school, for sure. Mason Wass says, David, good guess. If I hold it closer, maybe it'll help you see. This is, oops, other direction, other right direction. This is a praying mantis egg case. Yes, Ruby, you got it. Praying mantis egg case. And it, unfortunately, it's not a native species. It's We only have a non-native species here. And so it's the one called, the, what we call the Chinese mantis, because it's the one Chinese mantis. Um, species that we have here that is not native, but um, there'll be a bunch of babies, dozens of babies that hatch out, so uh, spring is here, and so lots of hatching and emerge, emerging, and in entomology we call, well this would be hatching because it's from eggs, when it's from a pupa, like with this little fly here, we call it eclosion. Eclosion is when they come out from um, come out from their pupil stage. So, ooh, I wish we got those. Wait, which Ashley, mantises? Ash? Oh, well, in my defense, we don't have mantids in the UK. Oh, Dave, okay, so you guys don't have, wow, you guys don't have any mantids? Do you guys have any, I'm not, I guess I'm not super surprised because technically up in the Northeast, we should not have any mantises. We just have, we have a European mantis, um, mantis religiosa, is the name of that one. And I forget the scientific name for the Chinese mantis. And then we also have now Stagma mantis carolina, which is the Carolina mantis, which has been creeping up northward with uh, the changes in climate and also just, you know, movement of nurseries and plants and things like that. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you guys have, no, do you have any walking sticks? We have we have one native walking stick, and I found it for the first time last September, I think it was. Here, I'm putting this down. Sorry for the shakiness. I'm just moving this so I don't have to hold it because there's no need for me to hold it if it's just flat on the surface. Am I moving this the right direction? Yes, I am. Cool. Um, Mantis religiosa in italics, too. Very accurate, David. David Sun, thank you. David Haddon says there are mantids in Europe, but not the UK. Okay, so guess, yeah, they guess they didn't get here as the Ice Age retreated. Yeah, I wonder which one will make it there first. Hopefully not, of course, because then they'd be invasive. Um, but yeah, and David says walking stick, not by that name, I don't think. Yeah, Phasmatodia for the order. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, this is what I have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed opening up this skull. Um, I would open up another one, but I also, maybe I'll just do it. Why not? Because I'm going to do it anyway. So I may as well open up one more. It's going to be a little faster, I think, to open up another one because um, because I already did it once, and so I know I don't, I'm not as afraid of, cutting the little, oh, it's moving a little bit, I think, was it? Maybe not. Maybe I'm imagining things. Do it, do it. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> okay.
Okay, which one though? All right, which one shall I do? Shall I do the the long one, the medium one? I'm just gonna call it by how long the top of the stalk is. Shall I do the longest one, the medium one, or the small one, or shall I do one of the twins? Put your request in the chat. I am curious to do the long one, this one. I am curious to do the twins because that's unusual that there's one, ones that are twins. So, all right, got two for long. Yvonne also says long. So you saw, thought you saw it move too, Ashley. Cool, Ash, cool. Yeah, people do move sometimes, okay. All right, long it is, here we go. Put the other two away. I have a, I have a, a pot over here that's very helpful for holding them all. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Oh, Ruby, so yeah, so a little catch up for anybody uh, coming in now, welcome to the bug scope. Make sure you subscribe and um, if you like the content, consider giving an award or giving a follow or a sponsorship and share with your friends and ask whatever questions you have. Oops, um, other way, cool. Actually, I guess I'll switch back to this view for now. Put that little baby up in the corner while we work on this one. All right, so I'm gonna do what I did before as well where I broke this off. We're looking at tiny little flies that specialize on this type of plant, the goldenrod plant. They, the, mom, the mamas lay eggs inside the stem and then the presence of the chemicals that are created by the little baby fly, the maggot, cause the plant to grow into this different formation, this bulb. And so I'm calling it an inverted lollipop because it has nu nu uh, nutritious tissues on the inside that the little larva consume. Okay, and now we're gonna open this one and see what's inside. We already opened one of them and that's what you can see up here. Whoops, up here. She wait, just for funsies, I wanna try to. Right there, ha ha. <laughs> okay, so I'll bring this down a little bit. Rattle them to see if anyone has the movement. Oh yeah, if there was one that was dry or rattled, it probably wouldn't be alive is my guess. Um, no data seismic in the UK says David Howden, but I think Carousius morosus may have established populations. Oh, okay. Where's that from? Hi, Nazim, how are you doing? Oh, you're from Milan, cool. Welcome, welcome. We are opening up a little gall. Hopefully I'm more of a, I'm an experienced gall opener now after opening it, one of them already. I'm just gonna open all around the edge and then twist it open like last time. And we will see what's inside. My guess is that none of these are parasitized only because I don't see any holes, but I also like really don't, oh, you know what? I probably wouldn't see a hole because if it got parasitized, it would have probably been um, during the summer when, and then the plant probably would have healed over the scar is my guess, but I, that's only speculation. I also wonder when the woodpeckers get to them too. I was talking earlier about how the woodpeckers like to eat these and uh, the woodpeckers prefer the larger ones and the wasps prefer the smaller ones. And so when you're in a habitat that has more woodpeckers, you tend to get smaller galls. But when you're in a habitat with more, sorry, yeah, when you're in a habitat with more wasps and less woodpeckers, you tend to get larger galls and when the both are present you get a medium size and based on like what i've read about them i'm guessing these are more on the smaller side 
because I read that they can be the size of a golf ball. And these are definitely not the size of a golf ball. They're smaller than a golf ball. Smaller than a ping pong ball, I'd say, too. All right. Making my way around the edge. Just finished dinner. Bon appetit. I hope it was good. What did you have for dinner? Any cicadas or bugs on your dinner plate tonight? Uh, David says, while well, Issa is busy, let me mention the British Plant Gall Society. Cool. Who study these? You're not a member, though. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. So David Howden put in the chat a link to the British Plant Gall Society. And next week, we ha we'll have a guest, Dr. Miles Zhang. You can check my website, um, which is in my bio, for the bug scope schedule. All right, I don't, th I don't know what's going on in here, but we can take a look and see. I didn't, I didn't break it right in the center, so that might be a problem. But let's take a look and see what we've got. Pasta with mussels, an invertebrate, but not an insect invertebrate or arthropod. <laughs> Yummy. Okay, so here's what it looks like inside this one. So all the tissue of the plant, and then there's something going on up here, I think. Oh, I think this is the pupa. I think this is our pupa. Let me see if I can dust it off. I think, I think this is our pupa. Oh my gosh, you guys. So remember when I said, let me flip this to both. Okay, I'm glad we did this. Good, good choice. I think we won the lottery here with picking the next one. Because you know how earlier I was saying that before they pupate and before the winter comes, they, they burrow um, a little exit passageway and they leave the thin top layer. That way they're still protected but when it comes time in the spring to exit, they can easily just pop up the last layer as an adult. So we found the chamber here. Like we totally found the chamber by the side that popped off. Here, let me show you what I mean. All right. So here is that passageway. I have to change the zoom. It's a little hard to show at the depth of field, but um, but this is the chamber out, and you can see how that is um, see-through up there. Here, get rid of all the lighting so you can see the chamber. There it is. There we go. We are confirming. The already known science. Science is something that is repeatable. And this, we're repeating what is known and we're discovering that um, the knowledge, what we're discovering uh, agrees with the current knowledge. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yay. Yay, science and discovering and exploring. Wait, where to go? Let's find. Okay, so yeah, the chamber is right there, the passage. The passage for the exit. It's right there. We found it. Yay! And once again, here is the larva that, sorry, pardon me as I change the depth of field here. Where'd that larva go? All right. So the larva, I have to turn the light back on. So here's that larva that made that chamber. Did it move since we last looked at it? I'm not sure. Um, actually, I think it is still a larva. Maybe? I don't know. Hard to say. But that's the larva. It's like a little skylight. Totally. Yeah, I guess it can... It knows when it's... It can potentially know when it's daytime or nighttime. And actually, it, it makes me wonder a little bit Oh, yeah, I forgot to bring this back up. 
Hi. <laughs> Not used to having two cameras. Um, that makes me wonder if, uh, like, if light at all has to do with them knowing when it's time to come out, because there are a lot of insects that follow along the diminishing light throughout the year and follow along with the increasing daylight throughout the year, too. And uh, that triggers different events to happen across different species. So, um, yeah, clever little things, indeed. When do they hatch? So they hatch when the gold, this, it's very poetic when you think about it, I suppose. They hatch when the goldenrod plants start to grow again. So there's no reason for them to emerge sooner. And because if they emerge sooner, they'll just, they won't be in sync, perhaps, and they won't find the place that they need to find to lay their eggs and find a mate. And so they come, they emerge when goldenrod um, starts to grow, which has not happened yet here. So as soon as, I'm going to actually keep tabs, I'm going to keep this in a safe spot and um, try to keep track and see that correspondence to see is the goldenrod growing now? Ah, have these little goldenrod maggot baby flies emerged yet? It would be fun to watch and see that. So, thanks, Ash, for joining. Good to have you here. If you ever want to hop on during a broadcast, too, you're welcome to, for the record. Mike, hello. Hello, how's it going? Um, yeah, fantastico. Yeah, so that's that's the gist. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. We could open another one, but um, I actually have to go now. So next time, I suppose. Hi, Lars. I'm about to wrap it up now. Um, but I'll keep you guys updated on how these little babies, these little youngins, the youth are doing. Uh, right now, they're doing the hard work of metamorphosis. They're going through a complete transformation where they turn into from a little white blob to a fully formed adult fly with wings and spots and more coloration and legs and it's an exciting time so cool yeah thanks guys for joining take care hi bye Lars um and I'll keep you updated on these and see you next time bye everyone